friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india in this video i am going to demonstrate a 2.2 mm feco this is the main incision with a 2.2 mm steel keratome and now a side port is being made on the left side of the main incision about 3 o'clock hours away and onward side port is made on the right side of the main incision about same distance away the side ports are 1.2 millimeter in width and now I inject an air bubble and underneath this air bubble tripan blue dye This is the tripan blue dye. Tripan blue dye is applied over the anterior capsule. And now the dye is washed out with BSS. This is a 23G Simcoe. And now I fill off the anterior chamber with visco and this is 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. We can see that the cataract is quite hard. Visco is being applied over the corneal epithelium for better visibility. The cataract is quite hard and at this moment I am trying to do a capsulorexis. I am using a needle to incise the capsule and raise a capsular tag. Since the size of the incision is only 2.2 millimeter, the uterita forceps will have restricted movements. But still we can do the rexis with this 2.2 millimeter wound with this thin uterita forceps. So this is an adequate sized rexis of about 5.5 millimeter. We can see that the cataract is quite hard, nuclear sclerosis is about grade 5 and at this moment I am going to do hydro dissection before injecting fluid some visco is expressed out. You must remember that the all the wounds are very small in size and there should not be any fluid build up and if there is fluid build up it may cause blowout rupture of the posterior capsule. So hydrodissection has been done and now visco has been again used to fill up the anterior chamber and now I am going to introduce the 2.2 millimeter feco needle and this is from Oatly. This is the machine being used is Oatly Cataract 3. The tip goes into the anterior chamber bevel down some superficial cortical lens matter is removed. Since the cataract is quite hard I am going to employ my technique which I call submarine chop. After aspirating some cortical lens matter I turn the handpiece and make the bevel up towards the cornea and now I use the chopper to push the nucleus little down and bury the tip into the substance of the nucleus just in front of the main incision. Now it goes through the main in through the nucleus towards the opposite equator. Since it is traveling under the surface, I call it submarine chop. And I'm happy that this technique has become 
quite popular in many places. And now I rotate 180 degree and separate the two heminuclei completely. Now each heminucleus is again chopped in the same way. The tip goes through the substance of the nucleus and it is chopped. And now, this is the other heminucleus. Now we have completely separated four large fragments. Each fragment is tilted, and emulsification of the pieces started from its apex. I am using high vacuum. Vacuum is 400 millimeter of mercury and flow rate is 40 from the very beginning and the ultrasonic power being used is 80 percent this is a totally unedited recording and you are watching each and every step of the surgery here I separate the two fragments completely one fragment is tilted I start emulsifying the fragments from its apex. Each large fragment is triangular in shape. I start emulsifying the fragment from its apex. The base is the equatorial part. I start emulsifying from the apex because this apex is pointed and sharp. If it goes down and if there is undue pressure on the posterior capsule by this pointed tip, there may be some rupture of the posterior capsule. Now here, this last small piece, I ask my assistant to come to FECO on mode where the vacuum is only 80 millimeter of mercury and flow rate is 20 ml per minute and the ultrasonic energy is 60 percent. Why? Because I wanted more stable anterior chamber during emulsification of the last piece. And now we have very small wounds. So I cannot use a Simco to clean the cortical matter. So I'm going to use bimanual irrigation aspiration for removal of the cortex. First I use the irrigation to hydrate the cortex a bit so that when I aspirate these cortex they come easily. Now irrigation is from the right side, aspiration from the left and see how beautifully the cortex is coming to the aspirating port. Nicely it is coming. Only one or two specks of cortex is remaining on the other side. I change hands and irrigation is from the left side now. Aspiration from the right and here it is. All the cortex has come out and the posterior capsule is clean, there is no cells, only some fibrous plaque is there at 1 o'clock and that is in the periphery, the central part of the posterior capsule is clear. And now, whenever the wound is very small and if we, if we don't want to enlarge the wound, then it is better to use visco for implantation of the intraocular lens. Hydro implantation is not reliable in such cases. This is a C cartridge from Alcon. Though the cartridge is from Alcon, the lens is a hydrophilic acrylic lens because the patient cannot afford a hydrophobic lens and I want to implant the lens through the same wound 2.2 millimeter 
So I've taken this C cartridge. C cartridge will not go into the anterior chamber. It will just engage in the wound. So I have to employ wound assisted delivery of the intraocular lens. Here it is. The lens has been injected in the anterior chamber and both the haptics have gone into the capsular bag. So this is wound assisted delivery. We have not enlarged the main wound. It is same 2.2 millimeter in size. The lens is tiled in such a way that I can go behind the lens and clean the capsular bag. Since there is lot of visco and since the wound is small, I am going to use both Simco and bimanual irrigation aspiration for removal of cortex. First I am irrigating the anterior chamber and now I push the lens little down go behind the lens and irrigate the capsular bag as we irrigate the capsular bag the visco gets diluted and it comes out through the main incision so after working for some time with the Simco cannula I work with bimanual irrigation aspiration probes. We can work without Simco, but initially, if we just dilute the visco with Simco and then use the bimanual IA, cleaning is much better. Thorough cleaning occurs if the visco is diluted by BSS by Simco. I'm irrigating the anterior chamber and now I go behind the I will irrigate the bag and now I go through the side port use both irrigation and aspiration. You can see that the optic is covered all around by a rim of capsule. So the size of the wound, size of the capsular axis is about 5.5 millimeter. This is a bit of moxifloxacin and now the side ports are closed by hydrating corneal stroma with PSS. When we inject PSS, we must take care to inject on the scleral side of the paracentesis wound. We must not inject on the corneal side because in some rare cases DMD that is Dismets Membrane Detachment can occur. This is the final lavage of the anterior chamber the antichamber is formed very nicely. Integrity of all the wounds are checked and few drops of moxie is applied over the cornea and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will give you all the necessary tips to do a 2.2 millimeter FACO. It is no big deal, just we have to employ, we have to devote some more time we can with the same surgery can be done with 2.8 millimeter wound in 8 to 10 minutes and when the wound size is 2.2 millimeter it will take about 15 minutes be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love respect compassion and great surgical skills